What's up guys, welcome to a special edition of Search and Destroy Commentary. This one is in special dedication to all those who lost their lives on September 11th, 2001. It's, um, it's been eight years and I remember that day clearly. I was in third grade. The, uh, the day was just beginning, you know, it was around eight o'clock. Everything seemed like it was going normal and everything went normal for about an hour. <clears throat> And well, for about actually two hours. And then after two hours, a teacher came in, whispered in our teacher's in uh, in our teacher's ear, excuse me. And the look on our teacher's face was very horrific. She looked like she just saw a ghost. And we were all terrified. We didn't know what was going on because we never saw them like this. You know, they were always happy and sometimes mad as well. You know, you know how teachers are. But that day, well, I will always remember it. I'll never forget it for any reason whatsoever. I mean, how can you forget a day like that? I remember everybody went home early that day because the parents were worried that there was going to be a massive attack. I remember the next day, the subways were purely empty. You would hardly run into anybody. I remember Times Square was almost dead. I remember it all. It was all on the news. The only people that were at Times Square were, were like the newscast. The many jobs closed down in fear of another attack. I think they they even evacuated the Empire State Building in fear that they were gonna knock that down. It was a it was a very scary day, and a couple of days after that, it was still scary. People didn't leave their homes. People didn't go to school, work, so on and so forth. And my grandfather worked in the North Tower. And don't worry, he made it out all right. Um, very good story, though. He told us a while ago. He only mentioned it about once. And that's it. That's how you could tell somebody's not bullshitting you. When they don't, you know, tell the story a lot. But they might tell the story a lot just because, you know, it's it's better to share the story. But you can always tell when somebody's lying or somebody's not. <coughs> Excuse me. But he told us about the story about... Uh, about he was sitting at work doing what he usually did worked in the North Tower I don't know what floor but it wasn't above the point of impact so <clears throat> the plane hit he said the building shook and that swayed about one feet to the to the left and about a couple of feet to the right and you know that's not normal for a building and he was also in the uh, 1993 bombing as well and he said that he remembered that he was in the elevator and he was able to get out of that as well so this is his second attack second terrorist attack so the, bu the building shook and his boss came out and said everybody remain seated remain calm everything's alright everything will be alright he got up he said he told his boss fuck you I'm leaving and that's what he did and we don't know what happened to his boss. I'm pretty sure he died. And he was about, I don't know, he said, I think it was 10 minutes away when the uh, first tower collapsed. Or no, he was 40 minutes away, sorry. He was 40 minutes away when the first tower collapsed. He walked home. He's a very old man, uh, a very nice man as well. And he walked home. And he doesn't live a couple of blocks away. He actually lives in the Bronx, just like me. And if you know, the Bronx is about a long way out. And he walked home, and he was 40 minutes away when the first tower collapsed. And he got out fine. But the story that I'll never forget was when he told us about how when he exited the tower, <clears throat> he saw bodies everywhere. He saw shoes with feet in them, arms, heads, you know, people who jumped. 
were right there in front of him. He saw pieces of the plane, debris was falling everywhere. It was complete chaos, he said. It was as if the whole world was falling apart. And my uncle, who worked in the South Tower, I think, he was very lucky. He took the day off and went to the beach. And, um, he, he, he you know, we went to Six Flags the other day, and he was telling me, because we passed by the World Trade Center site, and I forgot what sparked the conversation, but he was telling me how <clears throat> America wants us to forget about things like Pearl Harbor and the World Trade Center bombings. And I told him straight up like this. You, you got to be an idiot to believe that. Because if they wanted us to forget about something like Pearl Harbor, they would not put a memorial. They would not make the Arizona ship a museum right there. They would just take the Arizona out. They would take every other ship out that sunk. And they'll fix it up and build other stuff on top of it and act like nothing ever happened. Same thing with 9-11, the World Trade Center site. They wouldn't be working this long on it. They would just put up luxury apartments in three years and be done with it and keep quiet about the whole damn thing. And in 50 years, people will forget. But no, they're going to make a memorial. They have every year they do that sp special service thing where they put the flowers on the on the pool type thing. And then they have the lights in the sky. I don't know about you, but if I was the president of a country and I wanted people to forget about an event, I, will, I won't put... I won't allow TV shows about the event. I won't allow memorials about the event. So, I have to say he is an idiot for believing that, but some people are just uh, ignorant about some things, and one day they'll wake up and realize. And, um, anyways, uh, he was lucky, and my aunt, she worked, I forgot where she worked, I think she worked in the tower as well, and she was uh, transported to Staten Island for safety. She was covered with, with debris and all that powder and all that stuff and I remember when I got home well first of all on the way home we saw the we passed by the fire department and all the trucks were there ready to go you heard the the radios the, the firemen were screaming on the radios as if they were in the middle of, of a war in Iraq and it, it sounded like complete chaos down there and then I remember another image that would never leave my mind ever again as soon as I got home they were replaying the uh, World Trade Center collapsing. I left the school around 12 o'clock because my dad came to pick me up. He was worried. So as soon as I got home, TV was on. There it was. The World Trade Center was collapsing. And I was just looking at it like, how could this be? And I, and I started crying. I sat there and I just started crying. I was in third grade and I just sat there and started crying. Thanks for watching and God bless America. I was so worried about him because he's a really nice man. If you to, to get to know him, he was a really nice man. He's been through so much and he didn't deserve this again. And um, that is the main reason why I want to join the army. I want to get back at those guys who got us. And even though we are getting back at them, I just want to put in my share. I know a lot of people say, oh, you won't make a difference. Of course, I won't make a difference. We will make a difference. There's no such word as I. There's no such word as, as me in the army or in, or in any military service. It's we. It's us. That's the military right there. There is no alone. It's a team or you're dead. Well, I'll never forget 9-11 and 